environmental disasters involving huge oil tankers, poisoned wastewater, and thousands of tons of lead. The lead got into the water through the exhaust gases of cars. This is the current reality of the world's oceans. Did you know that water pollution has been around since the founding of the Roman Empire? That is, more than 2,000 years ago? Over the past 300 years, this process has acquired a truly global scale, and the main supplier of harmful substances was not tankers loaded with oil, but completely different sources. You are on the Innovative Techs channel. Right now, we will walk you through how the cleaning of the world's oceans from pollution began with a small river in the Dominican Republic. Welcome to Santo Domingo, the capital of the Dominican Republic. Outside the window, it is 1966. The country just held a presidential election, which was preceded by civil war and the appearance of the U.S. Army off the coast of the Dominican Republic. The establishment of relative stability led to an airflow of foreign investment and rapid growth in industrial production, both in Santo Domingo itself and its environment. The capital has experienced a real boom in terms of industrialization and urbanization. In fact, 71% of the industry and 57% of value-added production in the late 1970s were concentrated in Santo Domingo. However, the arrival of foreign companies in the country and the emergence of large enterprises took place in conditions of complete ignorance of potential environmental problems. Factories, workshops, and agro-industrial firms used equipment that did not provide any mechanisms to protect the environment from anthropogenic pollution. Outdated technologies were used, which consumed a lot of fuel. Thousands of tons of toxic waste was dumped directly into local rivers, Isabella and Ozama. The rapid growth of industry and agriculture in Santo Domingo gave rise to another problem. The coast of the rivers and the Caribbean Sea was quickly overwhelmed by the poor segments of the population thousands of whom rushed to the capital following the large companies. Human waste was discharged into the local reservoirs, which, coupled with industrial emissions, led to a real environmental disaster. Ozama's ruthless exploitation for 40 years has made it one of the most polluted rivers in the world. Its length is 148 kilometers, after which it flows directly into the Caribbean Sea. It's not hard to guess where the waste dumped into Ozama ends up. In 2017, the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research conducted research where they found that 90% of plastic that ends up in the oceans is from only 10 rivers. Moreover, 80% of all types of pollution come from 1,000 rivers around the planet. These rivers are the main source of pollution of the water spaces of our planet. By 2025, if the situation is not changed, then for every three kilograms of fish in the world ocean, there will be one kilogram of garbage. Fortunately, not all is lost, and there still is a chance for salvation. As you might have guessed, Ozama occupies one of the leading places in this anti-rating. The river itself has long turned into a real nightmare. Dead fish mixed with a dense stream of plastic waste this water is unsuitable for both drinking and technical use. Local fishermen who must catch fish find a variety of garbage inside it, from bottle caps to pieces of shoes. The leadership of the Dominican Republic, faced with apocalyptic landscapes and anxious views of environmentalists, began to look for ways to solve existing problems. The matter was approached comprehensively, and as a result, several programs aimed at protecting the environment were adopted. For instance, an alternative strategy for economic development and improved living conditions for the poor. However, these are all programs with a view to the distant future, and it is necessary to act here and now. Therefore, one of the key projects is considered to be the development of the famous activist Boyan Slat, called The Interceptor. Many have heard about Boyan Slat, who is an inventor and ecologist from the Netherlands. Slot has been dealing with the problem of pollution of the oceans from an early age. He's the founder of The Ocean Cleanup, a nonprofit foundation that specializes in engineering solutions for removing plastic from water. 
Slot drew attention to studies according to which most of the plastic waste enters the oceans from rivers. Having studied the issue, the inventor presented the project The Interceptor in 2019. By this time, the foundation carried out a series of test runs for the first prototypes. As a result, the public immediately saw the second improved version of the device. It was this version of the Interceptor, with serial number 004, that went to work on the Ozama River. The first, a test unit, is operating in Jakarta, Indonesia. Two more trash traps went to the Klang River, Malaysia, and the Mekong, Vietnam. Before its deployment, the Interceptor made a long journey from the Netherlands and was sent to work several thousand kilometers from his home harbor. The Interceptor arrived at the Ozama River in March 2020, and the ocean cleanup team expected to get the first results by last summer. But at that moment, a global epidemic gripped the entire planet, as well as the Dominican Republic. The country was put under quarantine, and all work on the launch of the project was stopped until mid-summer. When it came time to deploy the interceptor, Storm Isaiah, the second strongest of the 2020 hurricane season, hit the region. This postponed the start of work on cleaning of the river for several more weeks, and only in early August, the 004 went to filter the waters of Ozama. The storm did eventually hit the interceptor. It provoked an excessive accumulation of hyacinths in the riverbed of Santo Domingo. This resulted in damage to the anchor lines and the guide barrier. As a result, the ocean cleanup team had to tow the trash catcher to the parking lot within a month and carry out repairs. But even during this time, the interceptor managed to collect more than 100 tons of various wastes, excluding them from entering the world ocean. At the beginning of 2021, the apparatus returned to its duties and has been successfully filtering Ozama waters since then. By the beginning of the summer, the project management plans to publish a report on the work done and announce the data on the amount of garbage collected. How does this apparatus work, and what is it like? This is a modified catamaran with an autonomous solar power system. It uses river currents and a special floating barrier to direct debris directly onto conveyor belts. Waste is collected in special containers that are installed on floating platforms inside the interceptor. This allows it to quickly change containers for waste collection. It is important to note here that the trap does not just collect garbage, but sorts it by size and composition, using special sensors for this. The development does not have its own engines, so other ships are used for its transportation. Right now, the ocean cleanup team is testing a garbage flow monitoring system. This will allow a quick response to the emergence of contaminated areas by moving the waste trap to the most efficient area. Basically, Interceptor 004 is chasing debris to protect Ozama's vulnerabilities. Besides, drones are periodically brought in to give a bird's eye view of the system. The service life of the device is designed for two decades. If we consider that in one day, such a system can collect 50 to 110 tons of garbage, then under the condition of active operation, in 20 years the interceptor will catch more than 500,000 tons of plastic from the river. Impressive performance, you must agree, albeit theoretical. The interceptors, created by the Ocean Cleanup Foundation, are a kind of surgical instruments in the field of environmental protection of the planet. A battle for our future is unfolding right now on the Ozama River, which has become a garbage threat to humanity. Some may think this statement is too loud, but statistics do not lie, as well as millions of tons of waste. The Boyana Slat Foundation wants to cleanse 1,000 of the world's most polluted rivers by 2026, turning the tide with the increasing amount of garbage in the world's oceans. An important point is that the Ocean Cleanup Project not only captures waste by filtering the waters of polluted rivers, but also sends it for further processing. Waste is not only stored, but sorted and used as raw materials for the manufacture of environmentally friendly products, for example, the sunglasses that the creators of the Interceptor recently introduced. One pair of glasses is a debris-free area the size of 24 football fields. In the future, the organization plans to present some other products made from recycled waste. 
in addition to the four existing interceptors, the organization is already finishing the construction of devices with 005 and 006 serial numbers. But the problem is that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of such traps to be built. At the same time, the cost of one interceptor is an impressive amount of 700,000 euros. This requires serious government support from the countries where such devices will be installed. Thus, the fate of one of the most promising programs for cleaning the world ocean from anthropogenic pollution will depend on the success or failure of the experiment on the Ozama River.